Aptosh making the third defence of his English belt. He's the taller man here by six inches. His only defeat was against a certain Nathan Cleverly. Takes on Tony Oki, one of the most exciting domestic fighters in recent years. Former British and Commonwealth champion, he reignited his career by winning prize fighter. Meeting of uh, tough, light heavyweights here in Norwich's Danny McIntosh and that old favourite Tony Oki, who always gives value for money. Chance for the Portsmouth battler to win another title here. The English belt on the line. What has Oki got left at 34? Should be a good match, Jim. Yeah, I think so. Well, Tony Oki is always pleased to see him on the bill. He's very seldom in a bad match. And I think winning the, the, the prize fighter will give him a little bit of a lift. Things have uh, gone a little bit wrong for him. So, always gives 100% and I expect tonight will be the same. And it was a dip in form for Tony Oki. Lost that thriller to Dean Francis and then at short notice to Nathan Cleverly. No disgrace in either of those. Good punches there from McIntosh. Also suffered a defeat to Cleverly. More one-sided, that one. Down four times and stopped in seven. So both with plenty to prove here. He's got that awkward style, McIntosh. Oki said, there's no way I could find a sparring partner just like him. Yeah, he's here, there, and everywhere, all over the place. And Oki has to get close, it may take him around or so to do that. But he doesn't worry about height and reach disadvantage because he's suffered that almost in every fight he's had. So he'll just look to find a way to get close and to be effective. Yep, he hustles and bustles his way forward, Tony Oki. been effective it's been all action McIntosh just standing off trying to use his skills and angles not surprisingly a lot of training done in the Winkerbank area of Sheffield under the Ingalls loose and languid isn't he yeah Oki okay, missing a little bit in the early stages here but it'll take him around or so to get warmed up. So the awkwardness of McIntosh. Just struggling to pin him down this early. A better shot. Right hand over the top from Oki. Right start though from McIntosh, a confident type. Often drops his hands and a bit of bravado with him. Yeah, he's landed some lovely punches, McIntosh. He's been under pressure all the while. It's too early, obviously, for the pressure to be getting to him. But I imagine it could do as this goes along. Second up, round two. Here's the second. The English light heavyweight champion, Danny McIntosh, calls himself Big Mac in the third defence. Of his 12 stone seven belt, and the black trunks with the uh, sparkly silver and black boots. Six foot two tall, and a right hand catches Oki and hurts him, and he's gone down in the second. Looks in his corner, Tony Oki. Oh dear. That was a beautiful punch. It seemed to catch Oki a little bit high, but you could actually hear the impact of the punch. Just timed it perfectly, and I don't think Oki has it. He's shaken the effects of that yet. No, just again glances at the blue corner, Tony Oki. Senses scrambled. Trying to get himself together, but McIntosh has him down again. And is on the verge of a dramatic win here. Oki in big trouble in dire straits. Mistimed the count. Mistimed the count. Mistimed All the that count. experience. Tony Oki has lost in two. It's a massive win that for Danny McIntosh as he defends his English title. He was badly hurt, Oki, and he miscalculated referee Victor Lachlan's count. Inexperience.
but well a terrible defeat for Oki well I think it just shows how badly stunned Oki was I mean he stayed on his knees there's not the same need to stay on your knees now that Britain has come into line with the mandatory eight count you can get up a little bit earlier get used to being back in your feet again but Oki stayed on his knees thought about what he was doing but completely mistimed the count but a couple of thumping punches that caused the damage Beautifully delivered shots, and Oki just crumbled to, to the floor. They, see, the punch just seemed to catch him above the, the ear, and just robbed him of his senses. That was the first knockdown. Didn't recover from that. There were no balance, so no power in his own shot, so McIntosh just come right through him and followed up and got him onto the floor for the second time. Power in every shot. And again, down he goes. Now, you think a man of his experience, we have the, the mandatory eight count. There's no need to stay on your knees until eight. But he just seemed to be in dreamland, obviously stunned from the effects of the punches, but totally mistimed the count. I've trained very, very hard for this fight. I mean, it's the, the hardest training I've done. Well, longest training camp, not the hardest, but it's the longest training camp I've done. And um, that's paid dividends. And Oki's known for his durability. Did you always know you had the power to hurt him? I knew he had the durability, but how I've been hitting in the gym. You can ask Graham. I'm a monster at the Graham moment. Graham Everett, your new trainer. Watch out, Nathan Cleverly. I'm joking. <laughs> what did you learn in your loss, your solitary loss to Nathan Cleverly? I learned everything. I learned everything. I learned how to lose. That's the, that's the main thing. I learned how to lose. But I mean, all respect to Nathan Cleverly, he taught me a lesson. He's the one who's he's the one who's made me pursue my career again properly and not take shortcuts. Do you know what I mean? Before, when I was, I was training in Sheffield, I was like, Don was saying, don't go home at the weekends, don't go home, and I'd not listen to him, go home at the weekends. And I think, in the end, that's what showed. That's why I lost the fight, because I went bang on it all the time. Are you looking for a rematch down the line? I mean, uh, that's, that's far away at the moment, but that would be great.